hello uh, this is the video user guide for Moodle class album software uh, in order to install and run this software uh, you will need Java runtime at least version 1.8 or above uh, sometimes version 1.8 is also called Java version 8 uh, you may check if you have the necessary Java version by going to java.com website. And here you can see uh, if you have Java on your system already, uh, what kind of Java version you have. <clears throat> and if you need, you can download the most recent version of Java. Uh, now, in order to download uh, Moodle class album software, uh, you will need to visit the website, which is the address is written here. Now on this website, uh, you will need to download the zip file. I will be downloading it on my desktop right now. And you will need to unzip so copy the contents to wherever you wish. Uh, this is basically all for the installation. Uh, and you can also delete the zip file after the installation step. Uh, now that's it for uh, downloading and installation. Uh, this Java uh, program just runs uh, from wherever you place this directory to. Uh, now about the contents of the zip file, uh, there is the application. Uh, there are uh, libraries required uh, for this application. There is source code for developers if you are interested in development. The source code is also uh, bundled in the zip file. If you are not interested in development, you can delete the source code directory to save up some space. Um, there is a logo of the application and there is a Windows batch file to run the application. Uh, now these are the contents. Uh, we run the application in three different ways. On most operating systems, you can just double click on the jar file. Uh, this should be enough for running the application. On Windows operating system, you can also double click on the batch file. Uh, you may just require uh, some privileges. Also in all operating systems, you can open up a command prompt and you can type java-jar and then the name of the application jar file. So this is going to be enough for running the application. Uh, I suggest, especially people if uh, it's Windows operating systems, uh, double clicking the run.batch file uh, would be the best way to start the application. Now you can just minimize the command prompt window. And now we have the application running. This is the window uh, for the application. Uh, by the way, the run.bats file is uh, just a single line actually. If you double click on it, it's basically running the same command. And we just typed into the command prompt into the terminal. Uh, now the window is open here. Okay. Uh, so this window is resizable. Initially in the middle part, it gives information about the version, the author. And also these are the supported image formats by my Java distribution. This list might be different on your own system. So these are the types of images that we can eventually save as. Uh, so this information uh, will be uh, required later. Now window is resizable. At the top, we will need to type the home page for the Moodle server. 
we will need to type our credentials. We will fetch the courses we are offering or we are taking. Uh, this application can be used by Moodle teachers or Moodle students. Now, after we see the list of courses, typically uh, we just choose one of the course and we create a picture album of all the students in that course. An example is shown on the website, course website. And then we save it. So a typical workflow is just uh, put the Moodle homepage, put down your credentials here in these text fields, fetch your courses and create the album uh, in a separate window. And finally save it as an image file. Now I would like to demonstrate these with two different Moodle servers. Uh, the first one is an Azerbaijan University's Moodle server. So the address is https moodle and uedukz. Uh, as an instructor there, I am typing my own credentials and then I click the fetch courses button. Now this may take a little time now it found all my courses that I have offered so far in Nazarbayev University. And then I can pick, for example, one of my recent courses. I can click on the count button to count the number of students currently taking this course. And later on, we will create the album. Uh, so Nazarbayev University is running Moodle version 3.5. I also would like to demonstrate with another Moodle. Uh, so I also have a Moodle server myself. There are these classes currently offered on my own Moodle. So let's also do the same. So I'm just basically typing the Moodle homepage and my credentials on my Moodle server. And then I fetch the courses. Okay, so these are the courses I'm offering on my own Moodle server. And now let's pick this sample course, Intergalactic Relations. Again, we just can ask by clicking on the count button, we can ask the number of students taking this course. Uh, there are 48 students currently enrolled in this course and we will create an album. Uh, so let's uh, just click the create button. Now it is uh, pu pulling uh, students pictures, profile pictures. Uh, so depending on the load of the server, the current load, and the number of students. So this operation also might take some time. And all 48 students are their profile pictures, their full names and their ID numbers are fetched from the server. And they are just laid out. Uh, here you see there are eight number of columns. Uh, we can actually change this as well. So uh, the default value was eight. So there are eight columns and six rows. Um, and each student has the picture, profile picture, the ID number and the full name. And here this uh, students are sorted according to their full names in ascending alphabetical order. Uh, we can actually change this. So there are things we can do. Uh, we can uh, omit ID numbers if we want, and we can sort the students by either full name in ascending order or by their ID numbers again in ascending order. So I will do uh, now another uh, album. Uh, this time the students will be sorted by their ID numbers in ascending order. Uh, so you see same students, uh, this time they are sorted by their ID numbers. Also, if you want, you can omit the ID numbers. Uh, 
but they can still be sorted by ID number as well. So ID numbers will not be visible in the final window, but uh, they, can, they are still used for uh, sorting purposes. Now we have the class picture album. Uh, other things we can do is here you see we can change the number of columns and the rows will be calculated based on the number of students. We can change the number of pixels, the margin between rows. So you see between every row, there is currently five pixel gap. We can actually increase this. Uh, and there is also a margin between the picture and the text. And if there are two lines of text, uh, the ID number and name, there is also the same space three pixels is put between the two lines of text. So this is also adjustable. These are number of pixels. Now we enlarge things a little bit. We sort by full name. And let's say instead of eight, we want 10 columns. Okay, we create the album again. Uh, this fetching the images uh, might take some time. So now we have built a class picture album. There are 10 columns and the students are sorted by their full names in ascending order. We also included uh, ID numbers and uh, we adjusted the space between the pictures and text, between text lines and between rows. So these are the capabilities of the software. Now, if you are also unhappy about the layout, you can also resize the window yourself. This is another way to uh, adjust the margins between the columns, between the rows. Now, once you are happy, uh, with the outcome. Now it's the time for saving this. Uh, this is the last function available to us. Uh, here, there are two things to note. Uh, first thing is you cannot directly click save album. You need to create the album first. Uh, once it's created, this is the window. The last window, the most recent window is the one that will be saved as a picture. Uh, so these are two important things. Now uh, we click on the save button. Let's save this on desktop. Now we can give any name, so intergalactic relations. And as the type of the image, uh, you remember that initially in the middle part of the main window, there were uh, formats. Uh, most major formats are usually supported by Java distributions. I personally suggest PNG format. It's both compact and also high quality. Uh, so you can choose uh, the file extension uh, among the ones that were mentioned at the beginning. And you can save your window content as a picture. Now these are all this, your students sorted according to either their first names or numbers, ID numbers. Now you can maybe print this and you will have a, a class photo album of all your students. Uh, so this is basically the usage. And finally, uh, exiting the application is by this uh, cross mark at the top right hand corner. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching the video.